There's been a lot of rumors in the city about what's happening with the, the, the bodies. We're, as of late last night, we started to see bodies being picked up by front loaders, a bulldozer like uh, equipment, and then being dumped into dump trucks and then carted off. Uh, it wasn't really known where, where those bodies were going. Uh, there were rumors some were being burned. Uh, what we found today was at least one uh, series of mass graves uh, far on the outskirts of the city of Port-au-Prince, out uh, near the mountains, uh, in a field. Uh, we followed a dump truck uh, and discovered uh, what is uh, just a, a mass grave in this field. Uh, there were three or, or four pits that were still open that were about half filled. We saw probably as many as uh, 50 or 60 bodies lying either in the pits or some of them had just been dumped into piles uh, out on the ground. And at first, when you looked at them, it was hard to tell what, what they were. Um, they were wrapped up, some of them in, clo in cloth. Uh, some of the bodies were still tied to doors that people had used as stretchers. There was even one body that was stuffed into a, an old refrigerator that someone had used to, to carry that body um, to, to where it was left. And it's, you know, in, in Sri Lanka, we saw this. We saw mass graves, and often in natural disasters, uh, because of the sheer, the question of, of getting bodies buried in time, uh, mass graves are a common thing, but in Sri Lanka there was organization and they at least photographed the bodies so loved ones might be able to identify them. Here there is no such organization. Uh, these people are simply being dumped into pits and covered over uh, and then more people piled on top of them. Uh, and and as for their loved ones, unless they saw that person die and saw the body um, for themselves, they may never know what actually happened and we may never know exactly how many people died here. Well, we are getting a glimpse of the absolute worst of it in Haiti. Images taken Friday by the Associated Press show bodies filling a street in the capital, Port-au-Prince. There are fears that as many as 45,000 to 50,000 people were killed by the 7.0 earthquake that struck on Tuesday, and these images seem to give credence to those estimates. It is not clear how many dead are here or if they'll ever be identified. We also got images of a mass grave the government has been filling outside of the city. Aid is just now spreading throughout the affected areas, and there is a rush on to treat as many people as possible before they, too, are added to the toll. Lee Powell, The Associated Press. Driving around the city, uh, you don't see much of an improvement since the earthquake struck. Uh, some of the streets have been cleared, but most are still littered with debris. Tens of thousands of Haitians are still getting about by foot. Uh, gasoline is extremely scarce for vehicles right now, so hoofing it is the only way to get around. Everyone has a mask over their face because uh, the stench of the decomposing bodies blankets the entire city, and uh, in the 90 degree heat here every day, it, it gets worse. In driving around the city, uh, one gets the feeling that the entire populace uh, of Port-au-Prince is, is in motion. They, they all seem doggedly determined to head somewhere on foot. Exactly where everybody is going, it's unclear, but the streets are just filled with thousands and thousands of people on the march. It's the sound of uh, an emergency services vehicle a local emergency services vehicle passing by and uh, it's a rare sight here one wondered if there were any local services still operating we've heard report after report of, of people being trapped alive No Academy Task Force partnered with Dr. Stop with us in an attempt to help the people of Haiti. On the day of the incident, they had 700 staff members on site and have been helping Haiti for 19 years and are not showing any sign of slowing down. But we need your help. The short term medical needs are receiving and they need long term medical help. Our school is waiting for you. On Thursday, 14th, at MSF Logistics headquarters in Bordeaux, nine tents, two operating theaters, and 100 beds were loaded onto two planes that were soon to leave for Haiti. The freight finally arrived on Tuesday at Saint Louis where the hospital was to be set up. Racing against the clock, MSF teams strove to get the hospital up and running as quickly as possible. Pallets laid, tents put up, equipment installed, electricity and water hooked up. In Haiti, MSF teams are working in Paco, Choscal, Chancerel and the General Hospital. There are more than 700 national and international staff members working on the ground to provide emergency medical care. 
Medical activities are continuing in the grounds of Trinity Hospital. One operating theatre has been set up under plastic sheeting and another in a shipping container. These two theatres have enabled staff to carry out 50 operations per day, including caesarean sections, amputations, laparotomies and the disinfection of wounds. MSF teams are facing an unprecedented challenge. I imagine that not since the Crimean War have surgeons seen and amputated so many limbs, perhaps the Civil War in the United States, but we're talking about a situation that I've certainly never seen in my experience. We still have a vast number of patients with open fractures needing surgery. After 48 hours, the chances of infection starts to increase. An infection can lead to gangrene, which in turn leads to septicemia, which is like an invasion of the entire body by microbes. The infection takes over the whole body and can be fatal. No, please try your hardest to bring something in, please, for this country. And they're a survivor, so we need you to raise, we need to raise money, we need to get help, we need to send some money to them, send whatever we have. And we just ask for your help. You know, just take it from the kindness of your heart. Just imagine if it was you or your family. Thank you. At day school, we are getting involved in this situation because it's the right thing to do. I feel as though we have the power to help anyone that's in danger. It's only a matter of will, not power. We have to make a choice right now whether we are going to help or close our eyes.